Should you clean and press every comic book, even if you know you can't fix every defect? Hey there, I have a comic book cleaning and pressing video for you today, and I documented uh, this book. This is Amazing Spider-Man 220, a uh, great uh, book featuring Moon Knight, very timely with the uh, Moon Knight Disney Plus uh, series. And it was sent to me by uh, Professor Salt, who wanted me to take a look at the book and give it a cleaning and pressing before uh, sending it off to CGC. And what I ended up doing is documenting the entire process, start to finish. And I think that what was interesting to me was it made me really question whether every book should go through the cleaning and pressing process. And I have kind of changed my stance on that. Uh, I would say most of that uh, change has come about because uh, I have kind of amassed a larger quantity of comics and I really only want to press and clean either the best of the best or those books that I know have very, very obvious pressable defects. And then kind of thinking about all of that and then weighing my own confidence level in my ability to clean and press. And so if I feel like this is something that I could fix or an average presser could fix, then I will indicate on my books that it is a book worthy of either just pressing, you know, adding humidity, cleaning, and so forth. But I do look at a lot of my inventory and think there are certain books that even if I could improve it just a little bit, I don't think it's worth my time and effort. Now, Throughout this process, you'll see the clips coming up here shortly uh, of all of the various steps that I took on this book. Like I said, I learned some things, I tried some things, some things worked, some things didn't. So, and I think that's important to to kind of go through that process yourself as you're you're learning, as as you're going through this this journey of fixing your comics. Uh, just like I am, uh, I am not a pressing expert, uh, but I wanted to document my process of of how I'm learning and improving along the way. And in the end, I think I did learn that a specific technique could be used and it may actually change how I press going forward. So um, I hope you enjoy these steps. Uh, I think that kind of to summarize a little bit before we, we dive into the details, the, the question that I'm kind of thinking about right now is, is really just should every book be pressed and cleaned? Because as I look at this book now, after it's all said and done, and the, the thing about um, working on a book is sometimes you're staring at it for too long. Like I've literally looked at this book for, you know, some amount of time and I start to see things that maybe aren't even there or feel like I need to do more or sometimes less. I, I start to probably overanalyze and overthink, you know, the book itself and, and what I'm trying to do. And now that I've maybe had a little bit of time away from it, and it's just been kind of sitting here and I'm looking at it, you know, I think I have a different opinion about it, about should every book be pressed and clean, but I'm going to save that for another time. I, I just want to share these, uh, these steps with you, um, walk you through the process, and then Maybe you can leave me some comments as far as uh, anything maybe you would have done differently or um, would just love your feedback on whether you think that if you do intend to either get a book graded or if you just want to have a collection filled with really, really clean, high quality, high condition books, uh, should every book go through this process. So I'd love to get your feedback in the comments. So the, the next series of clips, again, it's going to go end to end, a full uh, wet cleaning, dry cleaning, uh, heat press, humidity. Uh, I attacked this book with everything that I had. So here we go. Let's look at the steps on how I cleaned and pressed 
Amazing Spider-Man 220. Hey there, what's happening? Um, I have a little uh, pressing project. A good friend of mine uh, who wants to be referred uh, to as Professor Salt, uh, he sent me this book, uh, uh, sent it to me uh, to basically assess what needs to happen uh, as far as any uh, pressing or cleaning goes. And then um, going to kind of walk you through the whole process end to end. So from the original unboxing of the book uh, out of the package he sent uh, to the very final uh, press and clean with me uh, wrapping the book back up and mailing it back to him. Um, so kind of a, a little like pseudo pressing business, if you will, right? So this is kind of, I, I think, the inside uh, view or insider's view to uh, just kind of what happens to your book when you send it to somebody for a press and clean. And this is the process. Uh, before I get started, yes, those are my steel balls. Um, so let's go ahead and get this open and uh, take a look at the book. And I want to kind of give it an overview, overview and a grade, initial grade. So I'll go ahead and get this thing unboxed. All right, so the first thing is he reused a Gemini mailer, uh, so that's a that's a huge no-no. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to use brand new Gemini mailers. No, I'm just teasing. But he reused the Gemini mailer where he received some comics, uh, and it looks like he did uh, bubble wrap the book here pretty nicely. So let's take a look. We'll discard. So I am not going to reuse this uh, a third time to send the book back, so I'm going to discard this. I'll set aside, and let's see what he sent here. So I thought he sent me one book to work on, but it looks like he sent me several. Um, or maybe not. Oh, these are just, yeah, I see what he did. Very smart. Um, just threw some, some of the worst bags and boards, these Midtown bags and boards. You may as well reuse them for packing, right? Uh, that's the way you do it. That's great. So... Again, this is just garbage. I'm just making sure he didn't accidentally leave any uh, cool Star Wars comics in there. Throw those aside. Somewhere in here. Oh, there's the... I just grabbed the comic randomly thinking it was a Midtown bag and board. Let me just make sure the rest here are just filler. Uh, so, yeah, this is a great book. Um, I'm just getting rid of all of his uh, trash. All right. This is Amazing Spider-Man 220. It's extremely timely because it has uh, the one and only Moon Knight right on the cover. And uh, he trusted me to work on this book for him. So I'm going to take this out of the bag and board and then give it kind of a, a pre-press and clean grade to see um, just kind of how I would grade it beforehand and then also to identify and document the defects uh, before, so we can see what needs to be fixed. Okay, so here we are zoomed in on the book itself, and then just kind of using the light here um, to kind of see, and just kind of go over it slowly. Um, down here at the bottom, uh, we do have a couple of issues. Uh, they are color breaking down in the corner and there. Um, so again, just kind of, Starting with the 9-8 and working yourself backwards. Um, those couple of issues already, you're kind of already down into the 9-6 area. 9-6 range. But uh, very, very sharp edge, right? The rest of it is is uh, extremely sharp. And uh, Professor Salt keeps texting me as I'm doing this. Um, so I'm going to have to mute him. Looks like we have a little bit of a crease here. I'm just gonna open the book up. It's, it's, it's not too bad, but just something to make note of. Um, that should come out in the press. Pretty sharp otherwise. Really, really nice up and down the edge. Uh, the top looks very, very sharp. Really nice. And that's tough. I mean, you usually get a lot of little nicks there with the, the, uh, the darker border. So really, really nice. So had I started here and just kind of went back and forth around the top, right and left, I'd be thinking this is a 9.8, probably wouldn't need a press. And 
Uh, but certainly with that little light, it's very, very light, um, really hard to catch even, just slightly um, creased there in the corner. And those two things were probably, were leaning towards 9.4 already, uh, just because those are color breaking. Now, already what I'm seeing here is, as we go up the spine, is we're going to have some spine ticks um, that are pretty, pretty nasty. Um, that one is really bad. So I'll just kind of change the angle here. And as I change the angle, get away from the light and pull back. And you can start to see here, you've got, uh, let's start counting them too. Right there, a little bit on the staple, smaller spine tick, and then a really, really heavy, severe one right there. Um, so there's about three, something on the cover, just color breaking scratch. Not necessarily a spine tick, but an issue nonetheless right on the cover where it's been, um, where the color has been broken. So about four color breaks, five, six, seven, another one, eight, nine, a little bit of a color issue there. And then in the top, top corner looks pretty good. I'm going to just turn it towards me so I can see here. It's not too bad. So again, the top looks really strong, but unfortunately with about, I'd say roughly eight significant spine ticks or color breaks in total, uh, eight to 10, this is where you're probably getting into that 9.0 range. I, I would argue maybe even in an 8.0 range. Um, so let's just split the difference and say we're dealing with an 8.5. I'm going to turn the book over. Now, the back is, there's some tanning going on with the back here. So I'm going to try not to get the get the shadow. You can kind of see just very lightly here. There's, there is some, it's hard to tell here, but there's some light tanning here at the bottom. Spine ticks are carrying over to the back. So yeah, just, just slightly dirty. I'm not sure if that's color, if that's ink. Or dirt there. So if I was on the fence between leading towards an eight or a nine, I'm definitely leaning an eight. And now I'm wondering if we're getting into seven, five. And I think that's probably where I'm going to leave the grade of this book. Um, it's, it's fairly sharp. You know, there's, there's a little thing there that that'll probably come out in the press, I imagine, unless it's a chip. Yeah, that'll, that'll get smoothed out uh, in the press. And he's already on me, too, saying uh, I'm a way too harsh of a grader. But I'm like, you just don't want to be disappointed. You don't want to think this is a 9.0 and send it off to CGC and have it come back as a 7.5. And you lose your mind. You flip out. You're like, what? What? No grader notes. I don't understand. Like, you may as well be a harsher grader. Like, let's grade this as a 7.5, right? We got another little issue there. Little little bit of a crease, you know, grade it out as a 7.5, and then uh, maybe it gets an 8. All right, so the book has been assessed, I would say. Um, I'm going with a 7.5 as is. Great looking book, just unfortunately with the, the darker um, coloring. It's almost like a dark green, unless it's it was black and it was just faded. But uh, the colors around Spider-Man are great. Um, you know, like, just look at that angle. That it, That's a great-looking comic. Um, really, really fun. Very timely with Moon Knight. Um, I think I would say that... So this is where, too, it's like, would you grade this book? Um, these pages are rough. I mean, th these are not white pages. These are... This may just get off-white not even off white to white. This is probably off white. So, if you're thinking of like should I slab this book? I I don't know. I don't know. So what what is a press and clean going to improve here? It's going to improve the back, but there's not a whole lot that can be done from a press perspective. Like that corner's going to be sharper. Um I didn't really go over the front cover to see if there's any creases. It's a little bit here right in there by Spidey's leg. Um, it's pretty flat, right? Like I don't see a lot of creasing. 
So it'll be an interesting experiment. Um, you know, maybe there's some cleaning opportunities here in Moon Knight's Cape. And then uh, on the back, it, it's definitely dirty. And the dirt there, you know, I'm thinking about it being somewhere between, you know, a, a half to a whole grade um, just, just from the dirt itself there. Okay, so here is the setup. Uh, the plan here is to go ahead and do a uh, little bit of a wet cleaning along the back. I really think that with this particular book, the, the only real major improvement is going to be uh, cleaning up the back. Um, I do feel like it's probably a half to a full grade, uh, less lesser than it could be because of the dirt. So I've got my uh, makeup pads here, uh, MacuClean, uh, gloves, and my absorbing sponge. So the plan is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wipe it down with a sponge, just pick up any dust or any other particles before I give it the wet cleaning, and then just give it a very light once over and let it dry. So go ahead and do that and see after it dries if we're able to make any improvements with the, the general dirtiness and discoloration of the back. Okay, so we're ready to start the process. I'm gonna get these gloves on. Okay, so just gonna go ahead and wipe it down with the eraser again. Not too, just a, just a basic wipe across the book, really. Not, not a whole lot of pressure here. When I talk about pressure, we'll kind of use that one in 10 scale with uh, one being the lightest of pressure and 10 being the most pressure you could put on anything. And this is like a, it's a one, one or a two. Just kind of wiping it down. Just any little excess stuff and probably do this several times. It's a nice way to just grab any sort of dust you don't want to put pressure with this too because it'll start to lift color. All right, so let's uh, open up the ImmacuClean. Took me a while to get the, <laughs> the bottle going. So yeah, again, just, uh, just some light wiping here. You can start to see the page ripple. Really, really light. So a one, a two at most on the pressure. Really just just giving it a basic wipe down, like it's just just nothing. You can see that the page is starting to get a little bit wavy, and we are getting some dirt off of it already. And I try not to um, kind of redo these, uh, or sorry, re, uh, I try not to um, use the makeup pads over and over and over. Like, so that's already done, so I'm going to put that aside. And use a fresh one because otherwise I feel like I'm just rubbing the the dirt back on itself so use a clean one I go over this one more time and then just let it sit here just trying to make sure I so I probably start out with a one in the middle as far as pressure goes and then just kind of extend out to a two or three as I get to the edge and it's good news like we're starting to see some some of the, uh, the dirt come off along with the tanning here so right one more here just along the spine and then just kind of sort of against the grain, if you will, come back this way. See if there's anything we can do about it. this corner looks, uh, this edge looks really bad, really yellowed. So I'm giving it maybe like, a, probably, probably like a three or four on the pressure there. And then one last time on the bottom, and then we're gonna let it sit. So I'm just gonna turn the book this way and then move in this direction away from the edge so I don't catch it. See if I can get rid of some of that tanning on the bottom. And that's that. All right. So now I feel compelled to just keep rubbing on the book, but I'm going to go ahead and stop there and let the book dry. So the first thing I'll notice already is, uh, other than the pads being dirty, um, we've got like potentially an, an issue here and there where it might have been kind of overdone. Uh, so you just see these spots in different places where Again, it's probably too much moisture. So again, that, as soon as you start to see that too, you, you just kind of want to stop and let the book sit. So go ahead and let that dry. Um, 
I don't know for how long, like somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes. Just make sure it's nice and dry. And then uh, probably flip the book over and maybe work a little bit on the Moon Knight area. Um, and you'll see why, again, with the, the curling here, uh, the book needs to be pressed regardless. So if you are going to do a cleaning. So uh, we'll leave it here and dry and check back and see how it looks after it's dried. All right, uh, I'm back after a little while. Uh, probably like an hour, I would say, to, to dry. You could see the page curling here. Um, you know, to the touch, uh, the paper seems to be okay. Uh, I remember in past attempts, uh, a lot of times the, uh, the paper would start to almost fray or lift off of the page. Um, and in this case, I think it's, it's fine. I don't really see... Uh, that was a little bit of a trouble spot where it might have rubbed a little bit too much right there. But um, I think it'll be okay. It'll be interesting to see after the press. Um, looks all right from the inside. Um, this part doesn't, I mean, it's, eh, looks about the same. I think there's not much I can do with the tanning, unfortunately. I just don't, don't see too much. Uh, this here... It's like this is gunk or something. So this I might try and clean up a little bit by just erasing right there. I don't know exactly what that is. It doesn't, it, it seems to be something on the page. It's kind of bleeding through. So see if I can get that up. Uh, so the next step for me is to um, clean up this area of Moon Knight's cape. Uh, it's definitely dirty in here. Maybe just give a little bit of once over on the trade. Um, and then it's probably ready for the press, honestly. I, I don't think there's too much else I can do with it. I think that the uh, ImmacuClean did okay. Uh, not great, just okay. Uh, I think in here, it still looks a little dirty. Maybe I'll go over it one more time, front and back, and then just kind of leave it. But I don't want to go through it um, really more than that. I, I think that at that point, then I'm starting to to mess with the paper itself. Um, I'll also clean up in the, uh, the little character box or the, whatever it is on the direct, the UPC, where the UPC would normally go. Okay, so same thing for the front cover, just kind of giving it a nice once over just to clear any dust or debris that may be on it. Get a pressure rating of maybe one, just, just barely holding onto the sponge. And just kind of flicking away any anything to the outer edges just to get any sort of dust off of it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clean the cape. Again, kind of a one and two on the pressure scale. I'm trying to get Moon Knight to really pop, so I'm just going to clean over on him. And then get the character box down here. Just trying to brighten it up a little bit. This one's getting a a little bit of dirt. I mean, that's just wetness, the discoloration there. So it's really, the front is pretty clean. Then just last, just a nice once over on the trade as well. So anywhere where I'm just kind of seeing white, just kind of rubbing on it. And there already I can see the page catching. So we're probably done. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of dampness, but not too bad. Um, I can use the other side if need be, but again, these are so cheap. I'm just kind of throwing them over. Um, so I'm going to give the back one more light cleaning um just being a little bit of i'm being stubborn um with sort of the edges i don't i feel like that needs to <laughs> it should be cleaner than that it's possible that that needs some erasing i'm not exactly sure but um i'm gonna try and let the wet cleaning do its thing you know already that looks a little bit better but i do need to be careful there is some yellow coming up right on the edge. So I want to kind of just tone it back a little bit. I'm going to try and get the bottom here, see if I can, if there's anything I can do with the tanning. All right, I want to get near the spine one last time. And then that should do it. And that's really all I want to do. Um, I don't think there's much I can do here. So I'm just going to leave it. I think that's it. Uh, this top part. I don't want to rub too much there. Uh, just before going into the press, 
uh, once it's fully, fully dry again, completely dry, I don't wanna mess with it. Um, so when it's all dried out, uh, so this I'll probably leave for several hours just to, cause I'm not gonna dry clean, or I'm not gonna wet clean it anymore. If anything, I might do a little bit of dry cleaning um, to see if I can get whatever that is off the book there at the top. And then uh, we'll put it through the press and so on. Um, so yeah, I think it it's already looking just slightly better. Uh, the whites are a little bit more vibrant. Um, the back was really a mess. So I feel like if I wet clean it anymore at this point, I'm, I could potentially damage the book. So in a worst case, it's the same. <laughs> Uh, you know, best case, maybe uh, we've brightened it up a little bit. Uh, I was concerned here that it was starting to pull up a little bit of the yellow on the edge, so I had to stop. But for the most part, looking at it, I don't think any yellow was really lifted. Looks pretty good, but as soon as I saw the yellow coming up, I had to stop. So, let the book dry again. This time, probably a good two hours, maybe even four hours. Just, I want it to be completely dry. Uh, no dampness whatsoever. And then we'll come back and see if we can take care of this little guy with maybe a little bit of erasing. The Immacu Clean almost finished it off, but I think, I think I can work on that with an eraser and get all that out. And then it'll look nice and maybe not uh, perfectly white, but much brighter and more vibrant. So there you go. That is the end of the wet cleaning process. Uh, now we'll let the book dry and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, uh, back at it with the book. Um, it's been drying now for a couple of hours. Uh, I think it's it's pretty crispy and dry, so I'm gonna flip it over and take a look at the front. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good, not bad. Um, now that it's dry, I'm gonna take my malleable eraser and uh, go ahead and just start working a little bit on uh, some other areas of the book here. Uh, it didn't. MacuClean didn't quite clean up what I wanted it to. Um, it's very, very close, but I don't know. There's just, there's just still some spotting here that I don't like. It's hard to, this is kind of what I'm trying to figure out. Is it worth it? But um, right in here on the cape, it's hard to get a good angle in here, but um, there's just a little bit of spotting and some dirt. It's It's minor, but I can see it. I wonder, too, if part of that might just be the ad coming through, but you, you can kind of see it right in there. There's just the, those spots, but what I've learned is um, if you try too hard, you end up damaging the book, so you kind of have to be satisfied with kind of the best you can do. And sometimes the, the color, whatever's on the surface, it's just going to be there. You'd rather leave it than start to pull up color. Like, I don't know what that is, that dot right on his cape. I can see if I can get out with the sponge a little bit, but again, don't want to start pulling color up. Yeah, it's just on there. It's it's not something on the surface. It's almost just a stain in the paper. So it's a little bit of an eyesore. But I'd rather return this book to my friend uh, in a, it where it looks like a comic book instead of it all ripped to shreds. Um, what I wanted to see on the back was, again, just like these sorts of things, like this spot on the top here. Just see if I could some way get that off with the eraser. It's just, it's, this book is really being stubborn. Don't know how else to say it. Uh, I'm gonna try with the other eraser. I typically don't use this, uh, but in this case, it really is on the wider area. So this, uh, this Pentel, high polymer eraser, I just kind of uh, get some of the extra materials off from the last use just to make sure it's white. 
And then the tricky part with this is it's very rough, so you kind of have to put your hand down and make sure that you're not, um, I almost just did it, so you're not ripping the page as you erase. So you kind of spread your fingers out like that, put your hand down, and then erase. Yeah, some of these spots are just, just too stubborn, unfortunately. Uh, from a pressure perspective, I'm somewhere like a five or a six here, just kind of lightly going over the paper, just along the edge, avoiding this. Uh, if you really want to be particular, you can take a backing board like this and kind of mark down the edge. And then, so with my left hand, I'm putting about a nine or a 10, as hard as I can. And then you can just kind of do that to get the edge. So I'm careful, I try to be careful with this one because I feel like this one really does lift some of those initial fibers off the paper. But in this case, with it being a white border, you're, you're okay to do that. But yeah, it's same thing with that. That dot, just like some of the dots on the front, they're just being stubborn. So, I mean, I'm, I'm probably pressing with a 10 on my left hand and, and an eight or a nine in my right, and it's still not coming off. So it's, it honestly, it looks like a drop of blood. <laughs> I, I can't tell what that is. And again, then what happens is you see here, you start to kind of create pro other problems, other creases where they didn't exist because you're trying to solve one problem. So sometimes when you're looking at these books and you're just trying to assess, you know, should I even mess with this book? Should I even press it? Um, many times I've done that where I end up creating new issues, new, new creases and things because I'm trying to get one thing out. So I think at this point, this book is what it is. Um, it, it just has some things that you just can't quite get out. They're just forever sort of stained in the paper. Um, and, and also, too, like, again, these pages are off-white. So what is this book going to max out with? It's This is not going to be a 9.0 or a 9.2. So um, I think it's probably time to get this in the press. Let's make it look all neat and crispy. And, uh, you know, let's try and avoid... <laughs> Get rid of this, <laughs> uh, because that was uh, part of the the uh, Immacu Clean wet cleaning. I think it's improved a little, but again, not to my liking. But I think it's 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 pretty good. The gloss is still there. Um, it's just there are those little tiny spots on it that I just can't get out, um, and that's just the way it is. So I'm gonna get this book ready for the press. All right, I'm getting this book ready to go into the press. So. Go ahead and make my sandwich, and I always start with the uh, centerfold here. Try and find the staples right in there. So uh, staples are really nice and close, um, close to the book. So that's good. And just take one magazine backing board, and that's my press telling me that it's heated up. I'm just gonna let that sit there and get warm. So magazine backing board right in the middle and flush right up against those staples. And then I simply take 65 pound cardstock, drop it in the between the first page and the front cover, flip it over, do the same for the back and just kind of rest it in there. I don't, again, from a pressure standpoint, I just kind of let gravity take its toll on that one. So maybe like around a one or a two. Um, and I'm always kind of with this hand pushing in that direction, just gently to make sure that everything stays together nicely. So that is ready to go. It's really that simple with this age of book. Uh, now I'll go ahead and open the press and I'm just giving it an extra minute or two to warm up. But I have two uh, sheets of SRP. And so there'll be one on top and one on the bottom. And then two magazine backing boards between the plates, the SRP, and the book. All right, so my press is set to 165 degrees for 15 minutes. And let's go ahead and get this book going. So put one magazine backing board down, glossy side up. 
one piece of fresh SRP paper. Don't reuse those, they're cheap. It costs pennies per sheet. Don't reuse them, you'll just introduce new creases. All right, so since this one had most of the curling on the back, I'm just gonna lay it with the back cover up. Then SRP, then this time glossy side down on the magazine board. And then what I always forget in this step, but I didn't this time, is that additional plate was right on the top. I use a plate on the bottom and top so that I don't have to flip the book. So now this is like a pressure check. So I can't push that down without a ton of pressure. So I have to loosen it. Should be able to close the clamshell without too much effort. There it is. Okay, so now the press is going. It is going to run for about 15 minutes with the book in it. Um, now this I'm gonna leave overnight and check it in the morning. Um, there's a lot of uh, reversion being talked about online with comic book pressers who get a little impatient um, or they're plenty patient but still experiencing reversion. But uh, I like to leave it in the press. Um, it's called a cold press uh, after the press um, is done and you unplug it and it kind of naturally cools down on its own. Uh, there's a way to scientifically measure, is it four hours in the cold press, six hours, depending on the humidity in your workspace and all of that. Just to be on the safe side, I just leave it in overnight. The, the longer it's in the cold press, uh, you can't hurt it. So it is what it is. So uh, we'll check back with the book in the morning and see how it looks. Hey, welcome back. So the book has stayed in the press overnight. So probably a good 12 to 14 hours in the cold press, which again, there's a lot of discussion around just how long you need to leave a book in a cold press. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll time my presses so that it's kind of later in the afternoon or evening. So I don't mind leaving it in the press overnight. Uh, if you're doing it during the day in the morning, then you're typically anxious and you want to just say, I don't need to wait a full 24 hours. I can just kind of uh, look at it later in the evening and maybe it's been in the cold press for four or five hours. And then you start to see that reversion on the book. So uh, let's go ahead and open the press and take a look and see how the book turned out. I was I'm particularly curious to see if a lot of the waving and the folding that was happening after the wet cleaning, uh, see if the, uh, the press took care of all of that. All right, we'll take the top plate off and the first part. Already I can kind of see as I took the first magazine board and SRP paper that the page just sort of lifted right up. Not exactly what I want to see, but I think it looks better. So let's look at this in more detail. All right, I'm gonna take out the inner pages. Here we go. So um, at first glance, it is kind of what I expected. Uh, obviously we have all of those uh, color breaking spine ticks there, but uh, I think the back looks a little bit better. Okay, so let's look at the book in a bit more detail. Um, so yeah, little things like this, like the corner still having a little bit of a, a crease there uh, kind of bothers me at this point. Um, this book's tough. It, it does look better. Um, I am getting a little bit of that, that pressing crease that I've talked about. Um, I still have a little bit of a hard time with that where you start to see a little bit of a crease here. And um, people have commented in the past, like you're either putting too much pressure in the press or um, it, the cardstock is too heavy. Um, everything I've read and everything, everybody I've seen, they use that 65 pound cardstock. Uh, some people um, don't use any. Uh, they just use the magazine board in the middle and then maybe a piece of SRP between the cover and the page uh, on both front and back. So something I may want to experiment with just to try and remove that. Um, 
I'm not so much worried about the reversion here. I think there's just a tiny bit of curling, but it's, I would say it's, it's not that it's natural, but um, I think just sitting in a proper bag and board might help just remove that over time. But uh, yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, this was a tough book because there wasn't really a whole lot that could be fixed with a press. Um, the couple of trouble areas didn't really work out, and I may want to consider um, going through humidity and trying it again. Uh, so right there, we still have that just slight crease that I did want to remove with the press. Um, yeah, I just don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to put it through an entire another uh, wet cleaning. Um, I do think the back is cleaner. So as it stands right now, I do feel like it, it's probably an eight at most. It's, it's going to cap out at eight, you know, because of the spine damage. So I think that that's part of the problem. That's part of my lack of motivation, I think, to to get in here and like just keep working on the book is that it, that it does have a ceiling. And you want to figure that out as you're working with these books. What is the ceiling? What are you going for? Are you moving a 9 to a 9.8? Is that the goal? Um, this was something else that I introduced. There's this little uh, crease in here now. So it might it might make sense for me to go ahead and give this a humidity treatment and then put it back in the press just one last time. Uh, what I may end up doing as well is just reducing the pressure on the press uh, to see if I can get rid of that press increase along the spine. So I think that's all that I'm uh, willing to do at this point is go ahead and give it humidity, uh, reduce the pressure on the press, and go ahead and give it one final press. But I don't really think there's a whole lot to do as far as cleaning the book at this point. I think it's as clean as it's going to get. Um, the really tough part here is the tanning. That The tanning part at the bottom is just something that's just uh, kind of being stubborn, especially down here around the spine. Um, but overall, just that the, the spotted dirt up and down here is gone, which is great. And then along the top, I think it looks like really, really nice and white. Um, maybe while it's dry, I'll just do some, some erasing at the bottom just to see. I don't really, again, want to spend too much more time because I feel like the more I work on it, there's more chance, uh, more of a chance that I could introduce a new defect. So uh, another round of humidity. My goal with the humidity is get rid of the subtle crease down here. Just make that nice and crisp. And then also down here, there was one more just sort of wrinkled crease right there in the corner that I did want to get rid of. So a uh, little bit of erasing, some humidity, back in the press, and then we'll take a look one last time and see how it turned out. Okay, so the book is ready for pressing now. A little bit of a different approach. I'm gonna use very light pressure on the press itself. Just make sure that the press can go down and close on its own without really having to force it. Um, so a couple other things. You see here the curling is back. Uh, that is because I applied the humidity. I was um, pretty generous around the specific spots that I wanted to correct. Uh, up here, uh, there was a little bit of a crease that I introduced while I was trying to fix it. Um, again, with the humidity, it almost just releases that crease on its own, which is nice. Um, I did want to address the spine with that, I call it like the presser's crease that, that I created as well. Um, and then uh, essentially the corner up here uh, had the issue. So you can see there's a lot of curling here because I did apply quite a bit of humidity and then also on the front cover as well. So I'm going to put this face down again in the press. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm using chamfered boards 
And essentially what that is, it's just uh, backing boards. They're thicker boards, but um, they create kind of a natural curve. So it fits a little bit, um, I guess, more naturally in the book. The only thing is you could see right there, it's not quite, because they are thicker, they're not quite flush. So this is where I'm worried about the pressure and the press, because what I don't want is I don't want so much pressure. This staple is already uh, out quite a bit. So what I don't want is the paper to come outside of the range of the staple and create this weird disappearing staple effect. So that's where you want to be really, really um, precise with your pressure on the press. And if you're not sure, uh, less is more. Uh, because again, you're not trying to squeeze the pages together. You're trying to um, reduce, uh, sorry, you're trying to introduce uh, this this right around right amount of moisture, right amount of heat to get the page to be flat. You're not trying to squeeze the book together. So anyway, uh, these chamfered boards, I've never used them before. <laughs> so I'm sure Professor Salt will appreciate that, me experimenting with his book. Uh, but uh, like I said, with light pressure, it's really more about just getting these creases out. Um, I did a little bit of erasing down here, but I didn't, I really wasn't feeling the uh, that part of the dry cleaning, it just doesn't didn't seem to be working. So I didn't do any immaculate clean or any wet clean on the, at this point. I just added the humidity, um, and then I'm using the chamfered boards. I have a magazine board here in the middle, um, and then I'll get this uh, loaded back in the press, and then we'll check it out um, maybe later tonight. So leave it in here for like a full eight hours. Okay, here we go. This is the um, the after the second press reveal here. So we're going to take the book out of the press. This was the second time around, uh, and we're going to take a look and see if once and for all some of those little uh, little creases and other nagging defects finally came out um, after a little bit of a humidity treatment and uh, one final heat press. So here we go. So this is the first time that I've pressed using the chamfered boards, so I'm very curious to see just how the spine turned out here. And one thing that I'll make note before I show the book too is uh, I had to completely dial back all of the pressure in the press because the boards were much, much thicker. So again, I'm concerned there that uh, it could possibly introduce some new creases or not, but uh, yeah, these, these boards are a really, really thick, but they have that, that curvature there, which helps with the spine. So here we go. Um, all right, so let's take a look. So kind of at, uh, at first glance, it does look like the nagging creases are gone. So that's good. Okay, so there were just a couple of little nagging creases that uh, were being pretty stubborn. Uh, so right here, again, it's very, very faint. It's it's mostly gone, but still kind of there. Um, I think it's better, but um, it's just one of those where just I'm not going to give it a third press. Uh, I I think it's, it's more or less gone, but I mean, just look at the paper. The paper is just so, so tanned and orange um it's just really tough but um i do think at some point you start seeing things that aren't there but there's no crease um it just is what it is uh it's really really faint but i think the press took care of it as best it could so all the corners are sharp now um 
The only thing that's kind of weird is we have kind of a another crease here. And I, I feel like it's from the chamfered board, like the top before the curve starts to go into the spine. Uh, it's it's pretty thick right here. So it's like it the chamfered board took care of one <laughs> problem, but then created another. So I'm a little unsatisfied there, but uh, I'll just keep going. Um, and again, kind of on the back, there's another crease now in here. So as far as the cleanliness and everything else and all those other little minor creases, they're all gone. The press definitely took care of it. Um, right there, again, it's going to be one of those where it's just going to be in the, the history of the paper. There's, there's just not much I can do about that corner. Um, it's been pressed two times now. The only thing I want to do is see if I can get the these new creases that uh, were increased by or introduced by the chamfered boards out because that's quite ridiculous and that's probably a good angle. Um, so that's not a shadow or a reflection. That is an actual crease that was created by the board itself. Now, is it created by the board or is it created by the press? You know, it's kind of a chicken or egg sort of thing. Um, I'd like to try it again, but I'd like to get get it to a point where I can um, press it without the creases. So I'm going to maybe try another technique where I'm using uh, a different kind of paper to put in between the cover and the paper, uh, uh, the, the first page of the comic, I should say. So a different kind of paper here and uh, see if I can get it to lay a bit uh, more flat um, while still protecting that staple. And, uh, I've never done this before. And again, Professor Salt, thank you for letting me practice on your book. But uh, I'm really getting tired of the these boards that everybody says, put the board in between these pages. Uh, and then it creates this, I call it like a, a presser's crease along the spine. I'm just getting tired of it. Um, it, everyone makes it look very, very straightforward and easy, but every time I press a book, I get the crease, and everybody says, oh, it's too much pressure. So I don't know, but I'm still trying to be mindful of the staples and staple push here. So the staples are still intact and looking good, so that's good, but I got to get this crease out. So I'm going to give it one more shot and see if I can, once and for all, uh, press it completely flat. Okay, so the book is in the press. Just a couple of uh, notes for myself here. Again, I used uh, standard inkjet paper instead of the cardstock. So just uh, your typical uh, office printer inkjet paper. Uh, I did not change any of the settings here. Uh, so just inkjet paper in the between the front and back cover and the first and back page of the comic uh, magazine backing board in the middle. I did give it a pretty significant amount of humidity on those the corners as well as the spine where the board had created the crease. And then what I also did here with the pressure knob is I completely turned it all the way to re release all of the pressure and then closed it once and it was very, very easy. So then I opened it back up again and I gave it one complete turn, almost 360 degrees, and that was it, and then closed it. So uh, just kind of trying to measure the pressure here as well did one full turn there. So um, I'm going to let this uh, sit in the heat press for about 15 minutes, and then we'll check it uh, later tonight uh, after a good eight to 10 hours in the cold press. Hey, we are back. Uh, about to open up the press here. This was the third press that this book uh, has been through. Um, it's been sitting in the cold press for probably about 12 hours now. So it's definitely time to take a look and see how the book turned out. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a little bit of a new technique for me, which is using just standard, uh, you know, printer paper, inkjet pen, uh, paper, whatever you want to call it. Laser jet, uh, just standard paper, not the 65 or 100 pound cardstock. So let's take a look.
Well, at first glance, it definitely got rid of... <laughs> the good news is it got rid of the, the crease that I guess I created or the chamfered boards created. So that's good. Um, it still looks like, again, even after a third press, uh, it's very, very subtle, but still that corner right there still just has a little bit of a creasing issue as does the same corner but you know what i'm going to leave it all right so here it is uh i take out again just that thin standard inkjet paper i had the magazine board and the inkjet paper in the back so um this is it uh you know again it is what it is it um it definitely has a nice glossy flat uh cover uh, the spine is what it is, but looks much better than it did before with that uh, presser's crease now gone. Um, back looks better, cleaner, but I definitely think it's been improved. Uh, I'm I'm just a little picky, but it, it still just has the tanning down here. But I think it's crisper, cleaner, the edges are sharper. Um, so I am pretty proud of just how it turned out. Uh, staples still sitting pretty there, looking pretty good. There is just a subtle slight crease around the spine, but I think that that's just the way it is. Uh, some of that probably may just kind of come out on its own, but all in all, I think it it did okay. Um, and these are probably just uh, off-white pages. Staples fine didn't staples didn't push through every page, so. All in all, a good process. I learned a lot through this particular um, process of pressing this book. And I definitely think I'm going to leverage the, the inkjet paper on the insides. I think there's even a technique of using silicone paper in here as well uh, between this. Or some people have even said what they'll do is they'll just bypass <clears throat> the cover and the first page altogether and maybe put it like right in here. But I think that's going to be my technique going forward is using the inkjet paper between the covers and the pages along with that magazine backing board. Or I may even try it without the magazine backing board and, and use cardstock. I'm not sure, but you really want that protection for the staples there. But all in all, great book, great, uh, really great colors in here. It's just unfortunate that it, it had, you know, some stubborn spine ticks that a press couldn't uh, really help, but from an overall uh, perspective here, you know, and I one thing I haven't looked at is the cape, which um, I did a little bit of erasing and some cleaning, and it looks looks whiter, looks better. The UBC box here, um, I think, looks really, really clean. And then the trade as well. Nice and clean there. Now, it just depends if the uh, the brightness and cleanliness of the book and what kind of uh, grade that would get um, or, or what kind of grade loss that would get if it was dirty. Um, you know, is this book an, an 8.5? Is it a 9? Uh, well, I was going to say I'm hard-pressed, but I didn't really mean a pun there. But um, I am... I. I just, I hesitate to give this book anything a, 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 above an eight. I really think it's a solid eight at this point. I think that the spine ticks are just too harsh. But what I would say, what it does have going for it, other than the colors, is that the, the edges of the book are really, really sharp. Um, I'm just super nitpicky with those corners. I tried really hard to press that out, and I just couldn't, couldn't quite do it. But it, it's very subtle at this point. But all of the edges are sharp. Um... This top corner, really nice, really, really sharp. And I do have a 9.0 that has similar spine ticks, but maybe not as many. So that's where I'm using kind of that as a guideline, as a baseline. But the corners are really rounded and soft on that 9.0 that I have. So that's where I'm conservatively leaving this book as an 8.0. And I think that it's possible it is certainly possible to get an 8.5 out of it. I think for me personally as well, too, the page color, that's probably going to be 
you know, potentially something that's going to bring down the level of attractiveness for the book. And then this is really, this to me is what's going to make it, it's going to drop at a half grade. It's just this little bit of tanning down here. So I'm pretty harsh and I'm, I'm pretty picky. Um, so I'm going to say that this is an eight. So I think my original grade was a seven, five. So it was a lot of work to bump it up a half grade. Did it go a full grade to an eight, five? <clears throat> Maybe you'd have to send it in and see what CGC tells you. But, uh, Front cover is without really any creases whatsoever, and it's nice and flat. So, I don't know. Do you think this is a 9? Do you think it's an 8.5? Um, am I overgrading it? Is this, a, is this a fine copy or a fine plus? Let me know in the comments. I'd love for you uh, to get your feedback and any other tips or techniques that you would use. But I think I've kind of figured out what my process is going to be. I just need to... Uh, my goal now is to reduce the number of steps and the amount of time because all in all even including the time spent in the press I uh, it was probably a total of about three days on this book and what I want to get it down to is no more than two days per book uh, I have I'm running one press I have a lot of books to work on so I want to kind of make sure that if I am going to spend the time to do a wet cleaning um, or any tack iron work that I make sure that I do that one time and that I press it correctly and maximize the press results and then get the book out of there and start the next one. So I hope you enjoyed this process. Hopefully me documenting the whole thing kind of shows you uh, not only just where I'm at with uh, my ability to press, but also kind of showing you some different techniques so that you can kind of decide what yours is going to be. But as always, would love your feedback and also um, would love to hear your stories about how you're pressing and how that's going for you along this journey, because we're all kind of in this together trying to figure it out. And there you go. So thank you for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.